viewers and all my subscribers are having an amazing Sunday with your family or with whoever you have around you. So today I'm going to be sharing my recipe with you guys for Baigan Choka or Balanje Choka or eggplant choka, whichever you want to call it, because every country and every different part of this world, people call eggplant or bygan or balanje or they have different name for it. So back home, we used to call it mostly balanje or egg bygan. And there are so many ways that you can cook it. But today I'm making the roasted bygan choka and it's gonna have a nice smoky kind of um, flavor guys and it's something you eat with roti so i want to share my version of bygan choka with you guys i guess some of you already know of it but it's always nice to see uh, how someone is making a dish to remind you oh i haven't eaten this for a long time maybe i should try making it or maybe i should make it sometime down the road so guys i will show you my version my version of bygan choka and hope you guys like this step so guys these are the two bygan or eggplant or balanje what whichever way you call it i think different countries and different places they call them um they have different name for it so today i have two of the bygan and i um wash them and dry them up and for the bygan choka, what I usually do, and in here I have like 12 cloves of garlic that I peel. And when we're roasting the bygan, we usually put garlic. And what we do, we usually make like a, a slice here. And then you put a whole clove of garlic inside. Sometimes if you can't get the whole clove to go in, you can split them in two. And then it'll be easier for you to put them in. You. And most of the time, I find it goes in better when you put from the bottom end here because the top is is um is fatter and it's harder to go in. So when you put from the end here, so I'm gonna put right away wrong these um right away wrong. I'm gonna put the garlic because when the bygan is roasting, the garlic will roast inside as well. So we're doing two things in one here and. I'm going to make sure for bygan choka, you want to make sure that this have a lot of flavor. You want to make sure that there's a lot of garlic in there because garlic is one of the star ingredients for this dish. And you want to make sure that it's well flavored up with the garlic and you can taste that little garlic taste because I remember back home they always say garlic is the star for this dish. The uh, bygan choka, if you don't have garlic, enough garlic inside, it won't turn. It won't taste as good as it should. And these slices that I'm putting into this bygan here, it also help it to roast faster because they have um, like air going in. So this one is done. I have holes all over. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put holes in the other one and I'm going to continue the process so I'll come back and show you guys right after I put I put all the garlic in this one so I, I'm putting six garlic in one and six in the other one so we're evening up the amount of garlic flavor we're gonna put into these and after it's finished roasting guys the garlic will get nice and soft and it'll be so easy to mash and I can see how young these bygone is my husband got me some nice one because since this whole pandemic thing i didn't go to the store to shop my husband is the one who's doing the shopping and whenever i make my list out for him i always specify what i need and he would go and get me the best ingredients so i'm very happy about that so i'm gonna keep doing the process and guys you can do this in your oven you can do this on if you have a um, gas stove, you can do it on top of the gas stove. And some of you who have barbecue, you can do it on your barbecue, um, wherever you have fire. And if even if you don't have a gas stove, guys, um, you can still do it in your oven and you can still get a good turnout because when I didn't have a gas stove, I didn't mind. I used to do it in my oven 
and it would still come out the same so this is how you do it and what i like to do i like to rub a little bit of oil around it this is what i know they used to do back home i don't know why they did it maybe not to let the skin burn but i'm gonna do the same thing because i remember my mom used to do that she used to rub some oil here and i guess the reason for that is for not to let it stick to anything or burn but I just love that scent of the oil and garlic together. It reminds me so much, so much of when my mom used to make this. So what I, because I'm gonna do it on my stove top, I wanna wrap it up in foil paper. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna wrap it like this in a foil wrap. And just because I'm cooking it on my stove, I don't want the juices to fall out and mess my stove because then I'll have a lot of cleaning. Today my stove needs cleaning, so it's perfect time to do this vegan choka. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other one. You just wrap it up into the foil like that. And then this was the same way I did when I was doing it in the oven. And I like to put um, a tomato in my vegan choka. So I like to roast that tomato as well. So what I'm gonna do, when I'm roasting, I'm gonna take this out and wash this. And then I wanna dry it, and then put it in the foil paper like that. And then we're gonna roast this at the same time. I'm not gonna use this piece maybe, or I'm gonna use that for another piece because I don't want it to, um, to start dripping because this is so easy to cook it will be the first thing to finish so you just want to fold it up nicely and then i'm gonna start the stove and show you guys the next show you guys the next um the next step i'm using the middle burner to do this and th this is the fire flame right here so i'm gonna put these like that so everything can fit and as they're cooking, all I have to do is just turn them, turn them until they're cooked on all sides. So I'm gonna let, let that cook. In the meantime, I'm gonna prepare my seasoning for this. So guys, ever so often, you just wanna flip it. And I don't wanna hold it with my hands like that because the oil is getting hot. You wanna flip them so they're cooking e equally on all sides. Let me do this with, with this here so I can have more grip. You want to make sure that you're moving it and I can see that it's cooking, that everything can cook evenly on all sides because I had it on the ends. Now I'm moving it around and you want to make it like, let it cook for a few minutes. Then you turn, turn, turn until all parts are cooked. I can see the top is soft because that's the first part. The tomato is going to be done soon, but um, I just want to show you guys how you do it. And then as it's cooked down to the, head of the uh, bygan I'm gonna take it out because that's when everything is gonna be done but in the meantime I have to keep flipping it until it's done cooking so guys I, I was flipping them over and over on the different sides they're already so soft even the tomato and it's gonna be ready soon so in the meantime I'm gonna leave them still on the fire and I will Start cutting up the seasoning that we we are putting into the bygan choka. I have two fresh green onions that I peel and wash and clean. I have half of a big onion that I peel and wash, and I have this pepper here that I'm gonna use a quarter and one mariwiri pepper because this have so much flavor and this have a different flavor. So we want this to flavor up this um, bygan choka so well. So guys, I'm gonna cut these up. And then we will come back and I want to cut them as fine as I can because for this bygan choka you want you don't want big big pieces of um, green onion and onion so what I'm gonna try to do I'm gonna try to cut them as fine as I can and then I and that's the way I like it so when you when you're eating you can get nice tiny bites of the green onion and the regular onion so guys, I just want to show you how tiny I'm cutting this and because I like it to be all over in the bygan choka and when you put it tiny like this, 
you're gonna enjoy because in every bite you're gonna have green onions you're gonna have regular onion and you're gonna have the pepper but guys there's so many different ways to make this bag and choka and if you like uh, bigger pieces of onions and green onions go right ahead and cut them into bigger pieces no problem at all it will still have the same good flavor it doesn't matter how you cut your um, ingredients but it's how you like it in your baigan chuka so if you like it a different way go right ahead it will make any um, your baigan chuka would still turn out as good as you want it to be the moment we're waiting for and look at that when it's nice and brown like that you know that it's done and to know that if it's cooked you feel it like that and if it's soft you know that it's cooked so what i remember back home we used to put our hands in water because you don't want to get burned and you would peel it back like that and when the skin comes off clean like this you know that it's cooked properly if the skin is not coming off you know that it's not cooked yet so you um th this is one way to tell and i remember back home sorry i'm putting that in the water <laughs> back home they would just roast this in the fire side without any foil paper or anything like that and you don't have to worry about anything getting mess or you have to clean up after because in the fire side you, you um, just roast it and it's going to come out beautiful. You can see with your eyes, your own eyes, instead of wrapping it up in the foil that it's done. And you can um, go ahead and mix it right away. So I'm going to peel around and show you guys. The next step. No, you know, I'm going to peel and show you guys on, for the next one another easier way that you can, um, you can, you can take out the inside. The flesh of the eggplant or the baigan and we also call this in Guyana too balanje so there are so many ways like I can mention earlier this every place and every country sometimes we have different names for different things but it's all the same thing just different names but I know so far I know that um, one is called eggplant choka and or baigan choka or balanje choka so guys i'm gonna try to make sure that i don't have any of the skins in there and this piece here is a little piece more that i have to get out and i'm gonna mash this one and let you guys see i just want to make sure that i'm getting all of it out it is very very hot but it's better to peel when it's hot because if you do it when it's cold it's gonna be so hard to take out the skin then. So I have all my seasoning in here, look at that. And the garlic, did you see how the garlic is falling off this? The garlic is just falling off. You wanna get a nice big fork and then look at how nice that is. This is the garlic here, it's roasted. And the garlic, look, you mash it right, right, it's so soft that you can just mash it like that and then you just want to pull this off the head and then you go like that and this is what you do you keep mashing until you mash another garlic here guys look at that so soft so the garlic is roasted and remember i put six garlic in here and i put six in the other one jess can you see yep so i'm gonna mash this one i'm gonna put a little bit of salt and then I will peel the other one and show you guys another way of taking out the flesh of the eggplant from the skin. A very easier way, but I just wanted to show you guys the way we used to do it sometimes back home. And then I'm going to show two different ways. So I'm going to add a little pinch of salt here, but when the whole thing is done, I'll taste and make sure that I have enough. And I will show you guys the next one. Okay guys, so we're gonna take the other one now and we're gonna see how this one is. And I can feel from the outside it's nice and soft, so I know it's cooked. You can tell right away. So there it is. You, and I love the smoky smell of this um, baigan. I really do love the smoky smell. So what you wanna do now for the easy way, you can cut it down like that from the top to the bottom and then you open it like that. Ooh, it's super hot, guys. I have to wet my fingers. But this is a nice one. It's so young that the seeds are very, very young. 
So I'm going to show you guys how you get that out. You take a spoon, which is a very, very simple way, and you just scoop out the inside like that. Instead of having to peel and peel and peel all the time, you just scoop it out like that. Just to be careful with the yep. before you get burned. Yep. And then you just scoop them up like that, and you get everything out clean without any part of the skin or anything. Make sure that you open it up nicely. So this is a very easy, simple way. I remember back home we used to take our fingers and keep pulling, pulling, tearing. Are you okay? Yeah, tearing pieces, little tiny pieces off all the time. But then you fit as you go, as you grow, and as you do things, you always tend to figure out easier way of making um, things way much easier. So I think sometimes it's good to keep trying. They say practice make perfect, right? And but eggplant or baigan choka or balanja choka which one you want to call it is such a delicious meal and it's like a traditional food in guyana and i think in in the caribbean like trinidad and all those places i know this is one of my dad's favorite and this is one of my favorite too i don't always make it because of the cleanup after but guys when you make it it is so so flavorful it bring back your memory the back home i remember we used to make this like as a breakfast back home they used to roast it in the fireside and then you will make your roti hot everything will be so hot and back home they make them super super spicy with hot peppers they never make a bygan choker without lots of pepper i remember back home when you re when you eat one bygan choker back home and you drink in the morning if you're having it for your breakfast and you drink and you have to drink tea hot tea and your mouth is burning with pepper i can remember that feelings guys i don't know how many of you can relate to that but this was something that we used to have on a regular basis so i always when i make these things i it will bring me right back to my childhood days when my mom would be making these and you gotta appreciate your parents guys because they did everything the hard way now we have it so easy and we have it the easy way but our parents and our grandparents they did it the hard way so guys i'm gonna keep mashing i have to taste it if i need to add some oh i didn't finish it i have to peel the tomato so i like to put roast tomato roasted tomato in my eggplant choker so i have it on the stove and i'm gonna get it off right now jesse stay right there okay and this is roasted and so nice i know because it's leaking all over my stove and okay. you this is so good in the eggplant choker so this and it here, smells so good yep yeah, this is gonna be perfect imagine mm -hmm. so what i want to do i just want to stick this on the top this is how I remember we used to do it. And you take the skin because anytime you warm tomatoes, the skin always peel off so quickly. So I'm gonna just peel this and then the whole thing is gone. See, look at that. So Jess, I hope you guys are liking how I'm making this. And I just like to cut it like that so I can get off the head out of it. So I don't have this hard piece in the middle. I like to take that piece out. It looks so yummy. It is yummy. And then I'm gonna mash that into the um the baigan and it's gonna have a nice color and this this tomato is gonna give it a nice sourish kind of flavor, guys, with the roasted garlic and the onion and green onion and pepper. This just tastes so delicious that you just wanna grab this with your roti and just enjoy. So guys, there's another step. I have to Put some oil and what we do we hot some oil on the stove and you just take it and pour it on top of it you do not fry this if you fry it it's not gonna be a um, bygan choka anymore it's gonna be a fry fry bygan and there is a there is different recipe for fry bygan so that if you fry it the flavor will change and it will remove that smokiness and it won't be um that bygan flavor um bygan choker flavor so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hot my oil and then i pour it on top and show you guys 
how it looks and I find when you put the oil it changed the color and the change the flavor so well so I'm gonna taste this and see if we need any salt and I'm gonna add if we do if we don't then I'll just add my oil and I'll come right back and show you guys how we do that so guys I put two tablespoons of coconut oil and this is the extra virgin coconut oil that I'm using and um, I'm just gonna let it hot because we want it to be very hot when we put it in this dish it's gonna be um, it's gonna give it that nice um, flavor of the oil coconut oil imagine it with nice fresh extra virgin coconut oil so I'm gonna let this hot until it's all melted and then I'll pour it into my bag and chocolate and that will make a big difference this is the traditional way of making baigan choka with hot oil poured on top and then you mix it in until you can't see the oil anymore and if i find the oil make it nice and fluffy and it's so delicious but we'll show you guys as soon as i finish warming up the oil in the hot oil and i usually make this song because the oil is hot you want to pour it up all over and you want to make sure I'm gonna put all and then I'll mix it in but that's what you do and that wouldn't remove that smoky roasted flavor mmm oh my god it smells so good and nothing like when you put this coconut fresh um, extra virgin coconut oil this is a cold press one so it is so very very it smells just like when my mom used to make it back home because she used to make it with coconut oil as well and guys this will make it so fluffy so i have to mix it in until the oil is all dissolved into the um baigan choka and then guys this here will be so delicious i taste it for salt and guys i did two two baigan and one tomato and i add about one teaspoon of salt but if you're making and um, keep in mind that all the baigans are different in size so you might not if you're gonna make this sometime do not use my measurement of salt because baigan have different size and yours might be a bigger one that need more salt or it might can be a smaller one that don't require that much salt so please taste and add salt to your taste not um you don't have to follow my salt um, thing, but you can put your own one. So now I can see that the, the oil is all gone and this smells so good. I can smell that coconut, oh my God, garlicky roasted flavor. It is smelling so good. I can't wait just to make a roti and just taste this and let you guys know. But before I do so, I'm gonna give Natalie and Jessica a taste of it to, Yay. so you they can say how they like it but I will do a taste test with a roti for you guys because that's what we eat baigan choka with we always eat it with roti so I am just gonna give them because they're waiting patiently they like the way I did this look how nice and fluffy and smooth it is guys so I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna let Natalie taste it and Natalie let me know how you like Mmm, it's so soft, yeah. flavorful, and yummy. Good. I'm going to let Jesse taste now. Jesse, let us know how you like this. Mmm, I can taste that smoky flavor and and it's the softness. Swallow before you talk. Okay, <laughs> okay good. So, let me, we're going to come back and show you guys my taste test, okay? Guys, I made hot, fresh roti. So, I made all roti, and I'm going to just dig into this and i want to give the girls some so i'm gonna put a little bit in their plate and they have their roti and they're Yay. they're look madly and you can go enjoy and then i'm gonna put mine here guys i'm drooling to be honest with you guys i am just drooling and let me jessica make sure you get a good picture and i'm gonna taste for you guys how is that? Do you want this to be like this? Yes. Okay, so take a close up. So guys, I'm gonna taste and let you guys know 
Um, but just if you just just do the plate by the time I want to show them something. So quickly, what I want to show you guys: we took this, we took this, and we took that. And we turn it into this beautiful dish, which is bygone choka. If you want to say eggplant choka or balanja choka, whichever way you prefer to call it. But we took those two things, we roast them, and we turn it into this beautiful, beautiful, exotic dish. So guys, all my Guyanese friends who already know of this dish, and look how nice and flaky the roti is, guys. I do have a video on how to make my all roti. So if you guys didn't see it yet please check it out sometime but this dish always always make me feel so good so this is how we do it we just dunk it in and guys for all my viewers and all my subscribers i'm not tasting for me now i'm tasting for you guys to be with me in my kitchen every time i make a video so i'm tasting the first bite for you guys and then i'll do mine after so cheers guys oh my god oh my god i am just i just didn't, don't even want to give the comment but take a few more gobble but guys the roasted flavor in the garlic the tomato and the eggplant is so pungent the coconut oil that i warm and put in there and a little bit of hint of the pepper the tomato the sourness of the tomato the onion and the green onion guys is something that you will want to have so often so guys it's an amazing exotic dish for all my Guyanese friends who know of bygan choka and um, you haven't made it for a while i hope you, i inspire you to make this soon and for all those who never make bygan choka eggplant choka whatever you want to call it please you have to try this recipe and guys like i said if you don't want to cook it on top of your stove you can also do it in your oven as well and you'll still get the same turnout but you have to remember that the key to this dish is to find a good young balanje or bygan or eggplant you have to make sure you get a young one not one that's um that's hard or one that when you cook it there's gonna be a lot of seed inside so guys until then i'm gonna be enjoying this plate of goodness Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday afternoon with your family. It's beautiful. Go outside, get some fresh air, take a walk, do something fun. I wish you guys a very, very good evening. Enjoy your Sunday with your family. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. You only have to subscribe, subscribe to one video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Until then, bye for now. God bless.